since the beginning of time, man has nurtured a fascination for finding ways to defy the law of gravity. These determined men are no exception. Their machines are testimony to their determination, complex, unique, even frightening in appearance. Those who ride these brutes often find that fame is an elusive goal as they attempt to conquer seemingly insurmountable odds. Downtown Salt Lake City, Utah, and about 20 miles south of here toward Provo, one of the most notorious mountains known in sports, the Widowmaker. As is the case every year, thousands of spectators have gathered here in the shadow of the snow-capped Wasatch Mountains for one of the most unusual events in sports, the 20th anniversary of the Widowmaker Hill Climb. Hello, I'm Gary Gerald, at the base of an incredibly treacherous 1,500-foot course that has earned the Widowmaker the reputation as simply being the toughest, most prestigious event of its kind anywhere in the world. I'm joined today by three-time Indy 500 champion, Johnny Rutherford. And Johnny, while I've always thought that men who drive race cars at 200 miles per hour are a special breed, the riders about to attack this mountain have got to be in a class all to themselves. Well, they really do, Gary, because if people think I'm crazy, they ought to see these guys. It's incredible. You see motorcycles of all shapes and sizes and descriptions. You see riders in any manner of riding gear. No matter what, they're out there trying to do their best, and I'm sure it means as much to them to go up this mountain and go over the top, as they say, as it does for me to win the Indianapolis 500. So it's a great show, but I'm going to leave it with them. I don't think I'd want to do it. On this incredibly windy day in Utah, we are joined as a Sports World colleague by former National Motorcycle Hill Climbing Champion, Ted Otto. Now, Ted is about 1,100 feet directly above us at one of the most treacherous points on this course. In fact, a point so treacherous, some say it cannot be conquered. Ted? You're right, Gary. I am at what has to be the toughest part of the Widowmaker Hill Climb. This we're going to call the wall. If they can get through about 100 feet of loose shale rock and get to here, there's about a 50-foot section that's almost vertical. They say it's an 82-degree grade. It looks almost straight up, and it's full of rocks. If there's any way to get up this wall, they could probably make it over the top of the hill, but making it through this section would take almost a miracle. All right, Ted, well, here's a man who thinks he definitely has the equipment and the talent to get over that seemingly insurmountable wall up there. Jim True out of San Jose, California, a two-time winner back in the mid-1970s. You saw Jim fastening down the safety cutoff strap to his right wrist, his wife Mary alongside, final preparations being made, and John, the Yamaha that he rides is a unique machine. Yes, it is, Gary. It is two single engines bolted together on a special case, making it 980 cc's, producing just a little over 100 horsepower, and that's a lot. True, utilizing that 100-plus horsepower right now as he makes his first run. Everybody in this exhibition class gets two attempts at the mountain. It's either the high mark wins, or if they go over the top, it's the man who did it the quickest. And True, finally shut down 647 feet. But right now, history in the making. For the first time in 20 years of running at the Widowmaker, a woman about to attack the mountain. Earlier, she talked with Johnny Rutherford. Brenda, what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? having some fun <laughs> having some fun how long have you been hill climbing for about two years straight now and you're from Canada yes I am Lethbridge Alberta do you feel at a disadvantage because you're a female you know we have female race drivers in in uh, championship race cars Indianapolis cars and they have a hard time getting started do you find that motorcycle hill climbing the only difficulty I find is I'm not as strong as the men so it's a little tougher for me to hang on but I just try the best I can well good luck Brenda well, thank you. 28-year-old Brenda Pearson from Canada owns her own general insurance company, but right now that's the farthest thing from her mind as she sets a precedent here in the famed Widowmaker on her 450 Kawasaki. Gary, you really have to admire her because this is a very physical sport, and of course, as she said, she's hanging in there. Brenda 
slowing down just a little bit, trying to maintain some momentum, but that's going to be it. 325 feet for the first woman ever in the Widowmaker. And at the start line, Mel Kimball Sr., former winner in his 20th Widowmaker Hill Climb today, joined by his 20-year-old son, Mel Jr. I talked with both of them a bit earlier. Mel, 20 years now, it's really an anniversary. You've been here from the very first of the Widowmaker Hill Climbs, and I understand you're getting ready to hang it up. This is going to be the last one. This is it. I'm going to put the handlebars on the wall. When you look back over all of those years, is there one that stands out? Was there a highlight? Oh, I think so. In 68, when I when I did hold the record, I was all but four feet from going over, and, and I haven't got that close since, so it's it's been a long time. And now you have Mel Jr., who is stepping in here. You feel like you're kind of taking over the reins of a great family tradition. Sure. This, he's done really well in the past, and I just hope I can do the same. You've had one year to try to run in the exhibition class. This marks your second attempt. How do you assess your prospects as one of the youngest riders going against the very best the nation has to offer? Well, um, I think that I've got enough experience from my dad, enough you know, lessons from him that I think I can do well, maybe even win. I don't know. Well, right now we're about to find out just how well Mel Kimball Jr. has learned those lessons as he powers his 490 Yamaha off the line. His second time in the exhibition class here at the Widowmaker, generating a lot of momentum, using that horsepower to his advantage, trying to find the track now as he churns up the early yard past the 300-foot level. And certainly a good run progressing at this point, 600 feet now. This is the best attempt we've seen thus far on the mountain. He's going to be coming into the view of Ted Otto now as he nears that 900-foot plateau. Right, Gary, certainly the best run so far today. Mel Kimball Jr. as he churns his way up the hill. It's the first of the lightweight bikes to get up this far. And here he comes at the 900-foot marker. This bike weighs some 200 pounds less than the big one. Oops, he digs down in. That's as far as he's going to get. 923 feet for Mel Kimball Jr. But the best ride of the day so far. Got to be an excited young man, only 20 years of age. His father has been here from the very first year at the Widowmaker, and he has delighted thousands of spectators at the base of this mountain with a 923-foot run. The Lone Star State, Johnny Rutherford, remembered here among the crowd at the bottom of the mountain of the Widowmaker. We'll be back with more action in just a moment. We're back at the Widowmaker, south of Salt Lake City, Utah. A crowd of 20,000 on hand for this 20th anniversary event. And in that crowd is Johnny Rutherford. Hi, where are you from? I'm from Riverton, Utah. Riverton, Utah. Where are you I'm from Pocatello. Pocatello. Do you come out here much? Well, yeah. I live in Riverton. I drive truck out of there. Drive a what? Truck. You're a truck driver? Yeah, I am. A lady truck driver? 17 years. Is that right? First in Utah. Must like it. Love it. What do you do? I'm a landscaper. A landscaper. Mm -hmm. It's really something. Hi, what is what is the uh, what does this Widowmaker Hill Climb mean to you guys? A whole bunch. Oh, I see. excitement. I, I love the excitement. Uh, do you have a favorite? Yeah, I do. Who? Jesse Robinson. Jesse Robinson. Do you have a favorite? Um, no, I don't. This is the first time I've been here, but boy, the, the you know the excitement of the people and the crowd is just. Oh, that's something for me. A lot of them. <laughs> you bet. Well, Johnny Rutherford, having a chance to say hello to some of those in attendance here at this Widowmaker event today as we watch Lance Lundgren now from nearby Murray, Utah, making his first run up the mountain. 923 feet, the best thus far. That's Mel Kimball Jr.'s mark that he's going after, and it looks as if Lundgren is off to a super start. And as that path becomes a little more worn, you can see there's a better trail as he passes the 600-foot mark, churning up this steep incline past the snow-capped Wasatch in the background. He's coming into the view of Ted Otto near the 900-foot level. Right, Gary. He's one of the better riders here. He rides motocross, but it's uh, early in his hill climb career. He's on a lightweight motorcycle, about 50 horsepower, dabs his feet as he crosses over the 900-foot mark, and that's going to be all for hometown favorite Lance Lundgren, 950 feet. But now all eyes are on defending champion Gary Peterson at the bottom of the hill. Gary Gerald is with him now. 
carry that tremendous run last year. You went over the top two times, the second time faster than anyone had ever done it before, just over 36 seconds. What was the secret of that run? Uh, I kept my momentum going and didn't let the bushes uh, get in my way. And uh, when I got to the ledge, I kind of cracked it on and leaped up on top of the ledge. And that seemed to make the difference to keep the momentum going. Now, in this year's competition, of course, it's fresh territory. It's a virgin hill. Nobody has been able to get really above 1,000 feet thus far. What kind of problems do you think everyone's running into? Uh, I think there's a, uh, lo looking from here, there's a pretty good gravel section up there. And the bikes are losing a lot of momentum. I think I'm going to have to hit it a little harder when I get up there to keep my momentum going. Gary, the wind has picked up the gale force down here at the starting line. I'm sure it must be murder on top. You know, a little earlier I got a chance to see Kerry Peterson's run from last year, and I'm telling you, he is impressive. Well, indeed, he has been impressive. He's won the event twice in the past. A little kiss for good luck from wife Sandy as the 27-year-old concrete construction worker from Yorba Linda, California, straps on the helmet, prepares now to fire up a 1,500cc Harley Davidson, a big bike for the man who won it a year ago. Now, remember, in the 19 previous years of this competition, only four men have ever gone over the top. Kerry Peterson is one of the four. He has been over three times. But this is a different portion of the hill as the course has changed every year. And compounding the situation, the factor that the riders are not allowed to walk the hill. They're seeing it absolutely cold for the first time. And Peterson sustaining tremendous momentum now as he nears that 900 foot marker. He's within the view of Ted Otto. And Gary, a puff of white that could be lime on the boundary marker. We're going to have to wait and see. It could be out of bounds. There's the wall. Peterson just goes over the wall like it isn't even there. Look at the steel paddles churn up that rooster tail. They're welded to the rear wheel for traction. Peterson should be able to make it to the top. Here he comes just a few more feet through the clock. Word from the officials, the time clocks apparently did not work. We're going to have to wait and see, but nevertheless, Gary Peterson again, first over the hill. So the first man who actually gets to the wall conquers it with ease. He's going to pick up a $1,000 bonus for being the first over the top. But as we look at the slow motion replay, Ted, what about this lime he kicked up? Gary, it could be the boundary marker. We'll have to wait for a ruling from the officials. Okay, another man that's been over the top, a former winner, Keith Rossler, is with Johnny Rutherford. Keith, what do you think about this thing? It's pretty tough. It's hard, hard act to fall when you fall carry. You did an excellent ride there. What did you think about uh, the run over the top just now? Very good. I, I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> you think you can do it? If he can do it, I can do it too. Good luck. Thank you. And so with confidence, certainly befitting a former winner, Keith Rossler, champion two years ago from San Jose, California, astride his 1,200cc Honda, a big bike, ready to churn away from the line. And Johnny Rutherford, he has immediately established a tremendous amount of momentum. He's out of there like a rocket and headed up that hill, and the momentum is what it's going to take, as we saw in the earlier run of Kerry Peterson, to get him up and over that wall and over the top of the mountain. 31-year-old utility worker from San Jose, Rossler passed that 600-foot level. He's closing in now on the 900-foot mark. He's approaching the wall. Another one coming at you, Ted. And he's coming through the loose rock. He has plenty of momentum. Look at him. He comes right at the bottom of that wall, and he leaps right over the top of it, just like Peterson did. No challenge, apparently. His bike weighs about 60 pounds more than Peterson's, this four-cylinder Honda. But the horsepower is coming out of it as he sails toward the top of the hill. The clock is still not working. We'll have to see what kind of ruling they will have. But Keith Rossler, the second man over the Widowmaker. Amazing, impressive back-to-back -back runs turned in by Peterson and Rossler, both to the top of the mountain. But down here in the staging area, the officials are huddled. They're dealing with the problem of the lime on Peterson's run, the malfunction of the clocks. Let's go to Johnny Rutherford. Talking with Butch Ashby, one of the officials here at the Widowmaker, there seems to be some controversy about Peterson's run over the top. No, Peterson's run, the Hill official is checking. He's still making sure all the way down, but as of right now, he's still 100% in. There was some lime in the middle of the track that got spilled when he was liming. It was inside. It is, he was not out of bounds up till right now, and he, but we're thoroughly coming down the hill to make sure. Uh, what, uh, what about the timing? Was there any question there about the timing of the two bikes that did go over the top? Yes, we've had a problem. Our timing lights, there's a strong wind up on top. We've probably got a 60-mile-an-hour wind up on top, and it's knocked our timing lights out. 
We do have them reworking though right now. Thank you. So for the moment, our standings will remain unofficial as we watch one of our Sports World banners going goodbye. That's got to be the tidiest thief we've seen at a sporting event. Here's what we know at this point. Kerry Peterson and Keith Rossler have both conquered the mountain. Lance Lundgren should be in third place at the 950-foot level. We'll be back with more of the Widowmakers shortly. Stay with us. The scene is the Wasatch Mountain, south of Salt Lake City. I'm Gary Gerald, along with Johnny Rutherford and Ted Otto, as we welcome you back to continued coverage of the 20th anniversary running of the Widowmaker Hill Climb. Peterson and Rossler have gone to the top of the mountain. The results are still unofficial because of a malfunction in the time clocks. Whoever has the better run on the second round could win it. But right now, all eyes focused on this man, Jim Brindos, another Northern California rider from Jamestown, California, as he churns up the hill in his 1500 CC Harley Davidson. Yes, and Brindos has the advantage of seeing where the other guys have gone, Gary. The bikes have chewed a trail up through here, and all he has to do is fight his motorcycle to keep it in that trail, and he might stand a chance of going over the top. Brindos, a 32-year-old auto mechanic competing in the Widowmaker for the sixth time, appears to have a good run going now as he nears Ted Otto. Brindos coming into view right through the loose rocks. He's headed for the wall, and he jumps right up over the top. The wind up here is blowing all that loose lime around, but Brindos still within bounds. Headed now for the top of the hill. He's over the roughest part. If he can keep that engine moving, he can go on over. He's working hard at it. The bike bobbles a little bit. He hangs onto the handlebars, and he is headed for the top. It looks like James Brindos is going to make it, and he trips the electronic clocks at 54 seconds flat. Jim Brindos now the man to beat. So in 19 previous years, four men had gone over. We've seen three men do it today. Ron Hopkins now from Alderwood Manor, Washington, is the next contestant. And Johnny, he's got to be buoyed by the confidence that now there is a trail all the way to the top, and everybody seems to be getting up there. Well, that would have to mean a lot of confidence in the riders because they all know they've got a chance. And once, if they can keep the bike in that trail, they stand a chance of going over the top. Hopkins on a Honda now, once again, beyond the 900-foot level. Ted, here comes another one at you. Hopkins into that loose, rocky area at the bottom of the wall. He's coming through it very well. He challenges the wall. He's up on top, but he loses momentum. Now the bike is tumbling down, takes out the 1,100-foot marker, comes down to the bottom of the wall, and Hopkins and the bike are all tangled up. Let's take a look at what went wrong. Hopkins now coming up into that loose shale area, jumps up on top of the wall. The bike just seems to lose power, and then he jumps off, gets out of the way. Then he turns around and tries to grab the bike because they measure the motorcycle from where it stops, and he wants to keep it on top of the ledge, can't do it, and both he and the bike tumble to the bottom of the wall, but Ron Hopkins unhurt. All right, Hopkins okay, and here's graphic evidence that it can be just as tough going down as going up. Johnny Rutherford, help the crowd again. Where are you from? Pocatello, Idaho. Pocatello. Came in with a group from Pocatello. Did you, you ride bet. in last yeah. night or yesterday? Yeah, we came in last night. There's about 20 bikes in our group. 20 bikes. Having fun? Oh, you bet. Have you been coming to a carnival. Have you been to the Widowmaker before? No, this is my first year. I've heard about it and seen photographs of it, but I have never been here before. It's really a trip. It's something else. It's incredible. The hill looks kind of tough. Deep hill. Okay, our next challenger here in the Widowmaker, another former champion and a great story and personal courage as Vince Bertolucci straddles his 1,000cc triumph. They're literally strapping him onto the bike. Indeed, Bertolucci, at age 12, lost his lower right leg in a lawnmower accident, but it hasn't hurt his career as a motorcycle hill climber. In fact, he has won the Widowmaker in the past. He's finished second twice, including last year, and right now, he's off to a terrific start as he churns his way now upward past the 600-foot level, and again, he comes into the sight of Ted Otto. 
Bertolucci working very hard, trying to get up the hill. The back end jumps up in the air. Now the front end is loose, and both feet of Bertolucci's are off the foot peg. The strap has broken that holds his artificial leg down to the peg. He's jumping all over that bike as he goes up over the top of the wall. Look at Bertolucci hang on to that bike. That's got to be a heck of a ride. And he's both feet dangling, paddling as he comes up the hill. Bertolucci trying to get to the top, but the chain comes off the bike. No way. Bertolucci in a lot of trouble as he stops at the 1200 foot mark. A breathtaking run by Vince Bertolucci and John what courage. It's hard enough I would imagine to do it with two legs and to see this young man doing it with just one leg. What incredible courage. Breathtaking performance. Vince is with Ted right now. Vince you kicked up so much lime coming up down that hill you hit the boundary or hit some lime bags or something the white stuff was just flying. I put up some bigger paddles on the tire and uh I was pretty much out of control. I was right just with my hands and my feet were off the pegs the whole way. Vince, you got one artificial leg. You didn't even know it was off the pegs yes, out there. I didn't even feel it. And after that spectacular run, defending champ Kerry Peterson surveying the action. As he surveys the mountain, we now have official word Bertolucci was out of bounds at the 940 foot level. Peterson gets set for his second run. Stay with us for more of the Widowmaker. From Widowmaker Mountain, overlooking the Utah State Prison south of Salt Lake City, we're set now for the final runs of the 20th annual Widowmaker Hill Climb. 20,000 spectators watching the action. Johnny Rutherford with one of the top contenders. Last long run, you had a pretty good first run. How do you feel about this one? Well, they're getting a pretty good trail burned up. I think I might be able to go over if I can get over that ledge. That's the toughest part? Yeah. They, my first run, there wasn't even a trail. I've got one burned about... 900 feet, so I got a lot better chance, I think, this time. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks. Well, Lance Lundgren certainly has his following. He's from nearby Murray, Utah, and at age 21, one of the youngsters attacking this treacherous 1,500 feet in the Widowmaker as he fires up his 490cc Yamaha and gets set now for his second and final attempt of the day. Initially off the line very quickly and utilizing a bit more speed than we saw in that earlier run as we would well anticipate because of that track that's now been worn into the side of the face of this mountain. Past the 600 foot plateau, a lot of momentum now for Lundgren as he comes up closer to that 900 foot level. That's where Ted Otto picks him up. Lance Lundgren off the bike and back on it as he approaches the spot where he finished on his first run. He's going to surpass that without any problem. He's headed through the loose stuff now and approaches the wall and is up over the top of it. The bike kicks up. He paddles a little bit. He talked about the trail up the hillside, and you can see that he's able to follow that trail. This lightweight motorcycle, much lighter than the big one, is able to pick a trail and go where he wants it to go with a little bit of help from his feet. Lance Lundgren churning his way up the hill, and it looks like he may be able to make it and Lundgren headed for the top of the Widowmaker the first time ever in his life and the first small motorcycle to make it to the top and he does it in 56.84 seconds the fifth man over the hill so on a day when we thought no one would be able to challenge the wall at the 1100 foot level we've seen five men over the top of the mountain this man, the pace setter early in the first round, Kerry Peterson, defending champion. But remember, there was a malfunction in the timing clock. He is not the leader. He must beat Jim Brindo's time of 54 seconds to take over the lead on this second run if he hopes to win for a second consecutive year. And Peterson is away, and John, he is away with a quickness that we haven't seen anyone come up with this day. Gary, what tremendous speed. He's a lot faster on the hill than anybody we've seen so far. He's going for it. Already past the 600-foot plateau. He's nearing that 900-foot marker. 
Gary Peterson challenging the hill. One more trip toward the wall. You can hear how he gets up on top. He backs the throttle off on that great big Harley, jumps to the top, force the power back on, and look at it churn. Those great big metal paddles just clawing the way up the hill. Peterson doesn't want to take any chances at not being fast time. He's over the hill again. So for the second time this day, Peterson has accomplished the seeming impossible, and now the gauntlet is thrown to Keith Rossler, who must duplicate the feat. Let's go back to Ted. Kerry, you just don't believe in coming up the Widowmaker and doing it once. You'd like to come up two times. This time, it looks like you've set a brand new record. All right. <laughs> We're waiting for the official time, but it looks like it's in the 35s, and that's the fastest anyone's ever been over the top of this right, hill. That's what I tried. I was trying to beat my old record, and I done it, I hope. <laughs> Well, you know, you come up here and you didn't have a time the first time. You had to do something about it, right. so you just turned this thing loose. That wall didn't even slow you down. Uh, what was it? Didn't quite get last year, but it was close. This is a taller hill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Kerry, congratulations. <laughs> a great run. It looked fantastic. Thanks a lot, Ted. <laughs> Well, the Southern California rider, Kerry Peterson, the man now to beat, Keith Rossler from Northern California, is the challenger, a winner here two years ago. He knows that he's got to go quicker than that 38 and a half seconds posted by Peterson. He has the same speed coming out of the hole as Peterson did, and he's going for it. Look at that. He has really got it turned on. We saw him exuding confidence before the first run. He is duplicating that run, making it even better now as he comes up to the 900-foot level. Rossler's been here before. He knows what to expect as he goes through the trail now that's been worn where the loose rocks are. Bounces up on top of that knoll that we've been calling the wall all day, but it's not as treacherous as it was. Rossler hanging on, throwing dirt and rocks all over this hillside, keeping his feet on the foot pegs, hanging on to the handlebars, just clawing his way to the top of the Widowmaker, trying to beat the time of Peterson. Rossler over the top. 43-43, it's not enough to win. Rossler will have to settle for second. And Californians will finish 1-2-3 as Jim Brindos takes the third spot. So on a day when we thought nobody was going to get beyond the wall at 1,100 feet, John, it turns out almost everybody and their brother was going to the top of the hill. Well, it seems like, and it was very, very exciting once they finally cut the trail, as they said, and got over the top. But, uh, boy, I tell you, they can still have it as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not sure that I would have believed it had I not seen it for myself. So that's the story from Widowmaker Hill for Ted Otto, Johnny Rutherford. Our congratulations to Kerry Peterson. I'm Gary Gerald, bidding you so long from the Widowmaker. Nestled at the foot of the majestic Wasatch...